lockdown and coronavirus for us as a family has been a massive change having to completely isolate ourselves and shield um hasn't been without its challenges um mm -hmm. namely for noah um our little boy who has a life-threatening condition and accesses the hospice um he's actually had operations that have had to be postponed and um really like quite vital tests and procedures that should have been being carried out they've had to be put on hold which is it's a really hard and fine balancing act um because he really needs those things to happen but if we were to put him in that environment where he would be at increased risk of contracting something that would be much more dangerous for him it's weighing up the pros and cons and what has the better benefit and keeps him the safest so this has meant that um he's having to almost put up with a lot more than what he should be putting up with at the moment because we can't access that help that he needs due to the risks of coronavirus um, obviously my husband Stuart he's now having to work from home um, again to protect Noah um, which has been quite nice actually just knowing that he's upstairs boovering away <laughs> um, just knowing that he's there has been quite nice um, I'm obviously having to homeschool both the children um, again which can be stressful at times but I'm thankful for the extra time with them um, obviously we've been shielding now I think I think on Monday it'll be 12 weeks something like that so it's quite a long time but that's 12 weeks that I wouldn't normally have had with them and because we've been shielding it's actually the wellest Noah's been for a long long time um, he's not picking up infections from being at school and whatnot um, so he's actually been the wellest I've known him for a long long time so it's actually been really quality precious time that we've had together as a family we just wish that Stuart could have been furloughed instead of working but there we go <laughs> um, I think one of the biggest like the hardest problems we face is obviously the isolation from our family and our friends and indeed Little Bridge House um, the children can't wait until they can go back um, but they are loving um, the ways in which like the sibling team and the care team are continuing to keep in touch with us so we had zoom bingo earlier today um, which is great fun and both the children just it's just nice to see another face when when you're inside and the most exciting thing that happens during your day is like a medical delivery or the postman <laughs> ringing the bell you know seeing somebody that you you know you you like and who shares quite a big part of your life that that's really special so they both enjoy that although Noah constantly is asking can I go can I go bridge house mommy it's like not yet and then he replies with oh like really sad um but he loves he loves the the um time on zoom with them um obviously all of our appointments or most of them are taking place virtually which isn't ideal because how can you how can you treat a patient virtually it's not it doesn't really work um but that's how we're managing at the moment we have got our first sort of like face-to-face -face appointment that we're going to have to attend coming up later this month which is actually really quite a scary and daunting prospect um to be walking into the like place that you've been trying to stay away from um so that will be interesting <laughs> it's also been really tricky because i'm now i'm everything which i have normally anyway because i'm a carer i'm a mum i'm a teacher i'm a physiotherapist you know all those things but because physiotherapy appointments and speech and language appointments aren't happening it's all down like all down to me now to implement those things and so in many ways there's more to juggle than there is normally um, which can be quite tricky because there's only so many hours in a day to get everything done and sometimes that can all feel a bit overwhelming but one way or another we get there in the end um, and like I say just having a chat with um, our contacts at Little Bridge House whether it's over email or um, we've had a couple of like 
deliveries. So we had a cupcake delivery, which is always great. Cake is Zoe's favourite thing. And actually that's one of the things we miss most about being in the house is the lovely food. <laughs> They're small things, but they mean a lot. Um, you know, I, I couldn't really say what it means, like just to know that somebody's thinking about you. Um, now, like life is slowly seems to be going back to normal for everybody else um, with some of the restrictions being relaxed, but nothing has changed for us. And so those little things are probably some of the highlights of our day. You know, like having that Zoom bingo today, that's probably the one thing that Heidi will remember most from today, not the maths lesson or anything like that. You know what I mean? Um, in the early days, um, getting hold of groceries was a big problem for us until um, we managed to sign up to the um, government's vulnerable slots. So now that's resolved, but we did receive um, a food package from Little Bridge House, which again was a godsend just to have some essentials um, when you're struggling to get hold hold of things. Um, I think the scariest moment I've had is going logging on to do our weekly online shop and not being able to get a hold of cornstarch. Now this may seem totally why on earth would that be a scary moment? Um, but Noah actually relies on cornstarch every night to stabilise his blood sugars. Um, and without that, his blood sugars can drop dangerously low and actually put him at risk of um, a coma or even death. So cornstarch is like the holy, holy grail to us. It, it keeps him alive. So to go on and see that it was out of stock was a major like, oh no, what are we going to do? Um, so social media during this time has been a real godsend because I could reach out I could say can anybody get a hold of like if you're going to the supermarket or the shop could you please pick us up some cornstarch if you see some so social media has helped in many ways now it can be hard to see what everybody else is up to now as I say things are going back to some kind of new normal for everybody else so seeing that people are going to the beach or long walks places that can be quite hard because obviously we're not allowed to do that in the same way we do take Noah out for an occasional walk our community nurse has allowed us to do that purely for our own sanity um, but Noah is normally a wheelchair user um, but we're not comfortable with him going out in his chair at the moment because of that risk of picking up germs on his wheels and whatnot so he's had to adapt to um being in a backpack carrier on on Stuart's back um which sometimes he doesn't mind but obviously he misses that freedom and independence yeah, he gets yeah. from moving himself around but I think now after 12 weeks when we do get out he's just so happy to be outside that he doesn't mind too much we obviously miss a lot of things about Little Bridge House um, since December, which seems like well, it's probably the longest we've ever gone without coming to stay. We had two of our stays obviously cancelled. We'll do another one next month, which I'm imagining will go the same way as well. Um, so we just miss the escape from everyday life, really. Like I say, with even more to juggle, life, life is hectic anyway. Um, but when we have a weekend at Little Bridge House, it's a time when we can just relax and focus on being a family. The cooking and, you know, the cleaning, the lawn, all those things are taken care of. And so when we're there, our focus is just on our family and making memories and spending time together. Because often um, spending time together as a family is one of the it's bottom of the list of the million and one things we've got to do. Um, but when we're there, we're able to make memories that we wouldn't otherwise be able to. Um, so we miss that. <laughs> we miss like, you know, relaxing in the jacuzzi of an evening after a nice belly full of food, you know. And I mean, Noah and Heidi, they miss seeing all of the care team, all of the sibling team, because they've built up really good relationships with them now over the last, like, must be four years, I think um so they miss that and 
Noah particularly misses the physical contact with that. He is a very cuddly, touchy, sociable little boy. Um, so he's missed that physical touch from people that he really cares about. Um, when Sally and Adele um, brought, popped around some bingo prizes, you know, he's there and he's like desperate <laughs> to give them a cuddle. Um, so I think that's definitely one of the things we'll look forward to after this is all over is just being able to give people a hug. That would be really nice. Another thing we've really missed, obviously, when we stay at the hospice, we're with other families who just understand how everyday life is. You don't have to explain anything because they just they get it and the same with the staff um so we miss having the connections with families that we've met through our stays there um and just sharing about our everyday stresses and worries which are obviously at the moment heightened because of the current situation um i think by the end of it i'll have some form of ocd about cleaning and washing my hands or something because it's all gone a bit crazy um, but we do miss meeting with like-minded people who understand what you're going through. Um, but it hasn't all been, you know, doom and gloom. Obviously there's, there's struggles and there are things that are harder, um, particularly for our family at the moment. Um, but like I said earlier, I've had extra time with the children. So even though we've been at home and some refer it to being stuck at home, we've been, we've been together um and we've been making different memories so we've had like garden picnics we've had birthday like afternoon teas we've camped in the garden and Heidi and Noah have had a sleepover together you know all these you know they're simple things or splashing in the paddling pool you know we've baked we've never baked so much in our life <laughs> we bake something every week um which is just really nice simple everyday things but it's been time together where we've been we've, we're all well we're not in and out of hospital which normally I, I've never known a time this long um where there was not been in hospital whether that's admitted or for appointments or procedures um he's actually found that really difficult um he misses going to hospital which is actually a really sad thing to say um but it's his nor normality. He doesn't go a week without going to hospital for something normally. Um, and thankfully he doesn't see hospital as a scary place. So he's really missed, missed going. Um, and he's looking forward to going back and seeing all his favorite doctors and whatnot. The most important thing is it's our time has been made easier because of our connections with Little Bridge House and um, all the people there who are still taking the effort to make sure we're okay and make sure we're managing because um, as you said earlier it's not just about the physical and making sure that you're well in that sense it's um, about your, your mental health as well for all of us um, during this time where we're not seeing people as much so it's been you know really fundamental to have those connections um, and like I say, we're, we're, we're choosing to see this as extra time rather than lost time. Um, just cherishing every minute we have together that we're safe and well until the next hurdle arises, really.